Hello, it's Scott Manley here. By now, you've probably heard that the iconic, the historic uh, Arecibo telescope has collapsed overnight. And yeah, this is what I woke up to photographs by people like Deborah Mart Martorell, who shows a before and after. In the after, you can see that the towers are shorter and there's no dish. So far, the most detailed photos released have been by this website, Noticel, who have some really high resolution photographs taken from the air. Um, but yeah, there's photographs from all corners of social media. So what we can see from these photos is the dish is obviously a complete mess. The uh, triangular platform has swung around and smashed into the side of the dish. The azimuth rail with the Gregorian dome attached has fallen down uh, closer to the middle of the dish. And um, all three towers have lost their top tier and the support cables are laying all over structure. So I don't have rights to any of the photos, so I'm going to do an explanation of the collapse as I see it with uh, the power of Microsoft Paint. Because, you know, my coping mechanism is obsessively analysing failures. So on Tower 4, we had lost two of the support cables. That meant that they were carrying more load than they should have. One more cable broke, and at that point, those remaining cables were handling twice the load they were supposed to, which is not a good situation, especially when you combine that extra static load with the dynamic load that would arise from the forces being redistributed amongst the cables. Now, one thing that might have contributed to that first cable failure was there was an earthquake in the Dominican Republic, and as that wave train passed through the region, it appears that the collapse of the telescope was correlated, so it's very likely that there is a causation going on. Also, the collapse of the telescope itself registered on seismometers. So that extra load causes the remaining cables on Tower 4 to all fail, and everything starts to swing downwards. So the centre platform will start to swing down under the tension from those other cables on the other two towers, but the backstay cables on Tower 4 cause it to fall backwards and snap under the force. These are reinforced concrete towers, but they're going from hundreds of tons of compressive stress to suddenly hundreds of tons of lateral stress, and they can't handle that transition. So now the centre platform is essentially swinging free from the other two towers, and as it swings down, the force of the rotation causes the connection between the azimuth arm and the platform to snap, which means this begins to fall freely towards the dish while the platform continues to swing towards the sides. Obviously this is a major disaster and Microsoft Paint really isn't the tool to be showing this, but I don't have much time. So this platform is swinging sideways and what's going to happen is it's going to be pulling the tension on the cables of Tower 8 and 12. Those start pulling sideways and eventually those will exceed the uh, capabilities of the top tier of that tower and those snap off. But the platform makes it all the way to the side of the dish by the looks of things. So it's probably pretty late in the cycle by the point that these tower tops snap. As I said, this article by Noticel have lots of photos of from every angle. You can see that there's a bunch of structures in the buildings that have been damaged. So this is why the structure was considered unsafe. These cables being snapped and coming off, you can see there's tower, there's trees that have been demolished by the kinetic energy of these uh, cables. So there's very likely to be more information on this in the next few hours. I just thought I'd put this out before I have to actually do my day job. Uh, yeah, it is an absolute tragedy. I hope that some consideration is given to rebuilding it or producing a facility on this site, which is you know so uh, so important to Puerto Rico. One of the things I'm seeing on social media right now is you know, all Puerto Rican scientists who are saying that the Arecibo Observatory was a critical part of inspiring them to take on their career. There had been petitions aimed at the government with tens of thousands of signatures asking for the observatory to be preserved. Obviously, that's not going to happen. It is a cleanup operation at this time, but there are other facilities on site which do have scientific use still uh, at this point. But with the loss of the main facility, this is a technological step backwards for the entire planet. 
Arecibo was the most powerful radar telescope system in the world. There were bigger radio telescopes. There were ones which could get higher angular resolution using long baseline interferometry, but nothing could do planetary radar like the Arecibo facility. I'm really hoping that this isn't the end of the story for this historic facility. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.